Welcome to the Moon Code Podcast. On this show, we'll be talking about everything reading and writing with a focus on web novels. I'm Moon, your host, and I have several guests here with me today. Hey, everyone. I'm Ed Valer. And I'm Ingman Boo. And I'm Tectonic. Was it just me or was it? Yeah, uh, did ink. we want that for ink? Yeah. What was that? Ink, ink died, but... <laughs> yeah, your connection is on ink. My, my, my microphone. No, your connection. My microphone died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are so uh, publishing uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if, you, uh, if you sped him up, Moon, if you sped him up <laughs> twice the normal yeah, speed, yeah, it's still would not work. It's still not work. It's not okay. working. That's, you know, you. you Cut him off. Ink, no, stop. <laughs> shut up. Ink, shut up. I'm what? gonna def- I'm just gonna just delay. He, he can- <laughs> server mute him. <laughs> I, yeah, I had to server mute him. I'm keeping all of that in. I'm keeping all of that in. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> Tools for writing and self-publishing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, Jesus. All right. I have <laughs> unmuted ink. Um, it is now f- fine. Jesus Christ. Okay. So to oh, wait, can you guys hear me properly now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything is okay. Oh my god. All right. Here, so. The topic for today is tools uh, to use for writing and self-publishing. I thought this might not be our most popular episode. I'll I'll give you that, granted. But I think it was important because there's a lot of writers who go onto like sites like Mooncool or Web Novel and they just write directly on the site, so they don't have a backup. They don't have their stuff in the cloud. They don't have Um, file storage on their own PC or whatever, like they don't have any backups. And I know a lot of um, authors, even ones who are successful in self-publishing, don't use a lot of tools that could bring their their success to the next level. I'm going to start off with Google Docs. I know this is a very simple one, but basically I'm going to wrap any text editor into Google Docs, but Google Docs, Scrivener, uh, what are some other ones? Just the Uh, normal office. Dropbox? Oh yeah, Microsoft Word. Dropbox, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use Dropbox to store your files. But basically anything where you can write your content and have backups and save it to other places. The reason I write on Google Docs Docs is because it auto-saves and it's all in the cloud. So unless Google screws up in some massive manner, in which case a lot of people other than me are going to be very, very mad because they're like five backups screwed up. um, It's going to be fine. Like my content will be there. I'm going to write it. It's going to be there and it will auto save. I'm not going to lose anything. Yeah. I mean, that's why I use it. I, I've learned from very harsh circumstances of hard drive failure never to not have a backup of something. And just being able to write mm-hmm. and it automatically be backed up by Google, the Vive like service just takes makes it so much nicer. It takes a load off that I don't have to really worry about it. Yeah. And actually I really like it because I spend a lot of time on public transportation. So like uh metro and buses, and I actually like to review my work or go back to an earlier chapter and just read it over when I'm waiting. And it puts me in a different mind frame, just being in a different environment. And I actually do get a lot of review done that way too. That's cool. That's the way I hadn't thought about. Offline writing and then having it update automatically as soon as you're in, um, as soon as you're connected is something great. I used to do some writing on my phone actually when I was on the, 
metro slash subway on the way to and back home from work. And we wouldn't have connection in the metro, but it didn't matter because it would just update as soon as I got out of the metro. So make sure you get a text editor where you can save. And if you can, save copies of all of your files to the cloud. Even better, just write it in something that saves automatically to the cloud like Google Docs. Um, so that's for writing. It's, it's Sorry, go ahead. Just wanted to add on, and sometimes it's not even something as devious as a hard drive failure. I've actually had the charging port on my laptop fail on me a few times, and once was actually just before a trip overseas. So I was pretty much freaking out, yeah. But because I use a combination of pages, because uh, I like my app products, and uh, Dropbox, and everything was online. So uh, after the initial freak out, I realized, oh, hey, I can actually just do everything via like my phone and my parents' iPad. I'm okay. This is okay. I'm totally fine. Yeah. God, I hate writing on iPads. <laughs> when I you mean, got nothing needs else. Needs must, though. Yeah. Needs must. Yeah. 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 So that's for writing itself. For reviewing, there's a few products out there. None of them are very good in my opinion, but they can be helpful. Grammarly is something that no. can help you find mistakes. Yes, use it sparingly, okay? All of the things oh. in this section, use it sparingly. Yeah. Grammarly is good when used sparingly. It is an extra tool to help you find mistakes, okay? Yeah. Don't let it replace what you're writing. You still exactly. have to make sure it works. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, Don't it's a... It it, yeah. Just don't use it as an excuse to avoid an editor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, unless you're a literal god with writing, please get an editor. <laughs> yeah. Or unless you are an editor. <laughs> uh, even if you're an editor, uh, yeah. you should probably still get your own editor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I made Reading that noise it. when Moon... When Moon mentioned Grammarly, because I actually do see a lot of people just use it, end up using it as a crutch. I have a workflow in which I work with other translators who do a first draft and uh, some editors as well. And I've noticed throughout my years in that uh, if, if people just use these types of grammar and uh, well, these checking programs to check for grammar and spelling and that sort of thing, that's really fine. But it's when they veer into the territory of having these programs check for their uh, say writing style that makes things really problematic. Yeah. I never okay, use that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Grammarly mm -hmm. and the next thing I'm going to mention, these are things that are made for professional environments, which basically means they're not really made for fictional writing. Um, mm -hmm. Going off of that, the next one I was going to mention is Pro Writing Aid, which I'm assuming at least three of us know. Oh. Yeah, I know it. Okay. I know it, Ink? too. Oh, so all of us know it. Wait, Ink, do you know it? Yeah, I was the okay, one who thanks. recommended right. it to you, actually. No, you weren't. It, it was the... <laughs> yes, was. No, you weren't. Definitely not. <laughs> I, I'm going to go take up that conversation, dude. But, okay. I know. I know who recommended it to me. I know who. It was the dude who used to be... Um, the singer dude in the uh, Inkstone chat. Not the Inkstone chat. You're not in the Inkstone chat. The uh, web novel writer's chat. Isn't that called Inkstone, though? Right, it is. I'm, oh, <laughs> so there, there's that chat see, see, called Your Inkstone. memory can't be trusted. No, no, no. Yeah. There's another <laughs> chat. There's another chat that we made that uh, had only like a few people in it that we called the real Inkstone chat. So that's why it got mixed up. Uh, it was the guy who made the super generic, you know what, I forget who, Track? Was his track, name Track? Yeah, Track. track, 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 yeah, track. track. Yeah. He, he was the guy who recommended it to me. I remember this, OK? You say so, man. Sure. You might have mentioned <laughs> it to me, but he was the one who recommended it to me first. Anyway, Pro Writing Aid is kind of a style, grammar, everything, writing checker. I do want to say 
it's also made for professional use. It's more for like nonfiction article writing, that kind of stuff. However, it is very useful in terms of, ch again, checking for mistakes, checking for repeated sentences. For example, it has a function where it'll tell you the most used phrases you have in your book. For example, um, if you say he, she a lot or his, hers a lot, or if you say, I don't know, uh, we're setting off, right? Maybe you say that like 50 times in your book for some reason. It'll tell you that. So it's really good for finding big mistakes that maybe you just didn't think of or just see on your own as an author. Um, yeah. I like pro writing aid. Yeah, it's uh, I pretty prefer helpful. I prefer Grammarly. to use it checking for errors instead of Grammarly. Yeah, same here. I don't use Grammarly Actually, an anymore. Yeah. Grammarly is too basic, I feel, even for basic mistakes. Well, they yeah. kept asking me to buy it so much that I just kind of... Yeah. Anything that asked me <laughs> to buy it that much and block so much behind an obnoxious paywall doesn't deserve my money. <laughs> I mean, technically, Pro Writing Aid is just like a full 30-day free trial, and after that, you have to buy it. Yeah, yeah, I did buy it. I, I think yeah. it's worth the price. Um, just use it in a way that's smart. Just remember, it's a thing that's for nonfiction slash article writing, that kind of stuff. Don't use it as a style checker. <laughs> Because if you're writing fictional work, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, your, studying, your style sucks. And it's just like, well, yeah, because yeah. I'm not writing nonfiction. <laughs> One of my favorite features that Pro Writing Aid has is uh, sticky sentences. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I write sticky sentences so often. So it tells you how like fluent it is when you're reading it, which I really like. I love yeah, that it it's got a that. lot of stuff, like sentence for, uh, length variety, which is very important. Um, and also repeated words, which I kind of mentioned earlier, but I said phrases, but like, it's got a lot of small features that add up into a product X, even though it isn't geared towards fictional writing, it's very good for it. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's, I use, I usually ha had to ask someone else to point these things out to me, but I use pro writing aid instead. And that finds the things that people usually say to me, hey, you you missed this. This is kind of awkward. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it is. I didn't even, like, didn't even think about it. So I, I, th I think it's really useful. Now that we're past the editing phase, we can talk about publishing. actually compiling. Yes, publishing. And Ink, I think you should take this because I think Oof, you know man. what program I'm talking about. And Ink is by far the most fluent one with this program. Okay, uh, three programs c come to my mind right now, out of which the one I'm, I believe Moon is talking about is the one used by Amazon's own platform called yep. Kindle Create, which is pretty much a program Amazon made themselves that just kind of converts your Word files when formatted properly into a compatible file that is able to be read by most Kindles and just devices in general um the reason you should probably use this program instead of alternatives like vellum or scrivener or just oh so many others when you're planning to up publish to amazon is uh some compatibility issues that i've seen happen to some books just on rare occasions but they do happen where images get uh formatted improperly and then just generate more effects or however you pronounce that, which is pretty much just like patterns of dots that move around or where images just get scrambled or m many weird errors that happen in occasion. Um, in general, it's just an easy to use program. It, it, imagine using Word and just properly formatting everything in a very simple, yeah, it, I'm gonna say it's even basic tool. It takes a bit of work, as in it, a lot of things can't be automated. You have to do them manually. But overall, it gives a pretty nice result, even for people without much experience formatting books. 
So that's my go-to tool for that. Uh, alternatively, if you're way more into it and you're publishing in other platforms where it's not only Amazon, you can probably use uh, Vellum or Scrivener or I, I know there's a whole bunch of EPUB file creators out there or just learn how to do EPUBs through Word because I know some people do that. And that's it, I think. Yeah. Um, I do want to say Kindle Create is a very basic program. Its only purpose, basically, is for formatting files and for Amazon. Yeah. For Amazon. Uh, oh yeah, and can... that's an important thing, though. The files created by Kindle Create they can only be used in at Amazon. Yes. They're like Kindle something files. It's a special file thing that Amazon. I guess made up for Kindle publishing purposes. I do want to say you can use uh, Kindle Create actually as a text editor, but I would not recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Some pe some people might be tempted to. Don't do it. So, um, you've compiled oh. everything. You've formatted it. You've published it. We're in marketing uh, territory now. So yeah. Now just. We can Listen. talk about we can talk about the all important program. You know what it is, the keywords and categories one. But before yeah. that, it's been uh, a while since uh, Ed Fuller talked. So let's talk about marketing online first. Okay. No, I just uh, didn't couldn't contribute much to the earlier part. But when it comes to in. marketing, <laughs> thank, thank y'all. Probably because I uh, talk about the importance of this all the daytime, and I feel like I myself am a broken record by this point. In that, um, there's a lot of really great paid tools out there, but there's also a lot of great free tools that everyone should really take advantage of. And I feel like people don't because it's a slight hassle. You have to keep grinding away at it, and it's really like all forms of social media, whether in terms of uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter or email lists, you know, your, your own website. One thing is to really figure out where most of your readers are. Heck, maybe they're even on Pinterest if you're mostly located in the States. That's where a lot of people spend a lot of time. And when, you're, when you find the right platform, you need to post engaging material in a sense that it encourages people to keep checking you out and follow you and see, hey, what's up with you? And once when you do all that, it makes it so much easier for you to have a consistent following and to be able to tap into a built-in readership base that'll just automatically check you out whenever you have something new out. And it doesn't cost you a single cent, honestly, to build up all these followers online. It just takes time. You really need to be able to post consistently and have interesting content. And I think that's a big reason why people tend not to do it. I could go yeah, on and on about this. But. It, it's a lot of hard work to market. <laughs> but I've seen more and more just how important it is to build some kind of a following. Because if you're dealing with a small publisher or an indie publisher like us, honestly, the author's own fan base is probably one of the best marketing systems you have as and one of the best sales drivers you have. And honestly, mm -hmm. even with traditional publishing, unless you happen to get a wonderful contract where there's like, oh, yeah, we're going to sell your book everywhere and we're going to market it everywhere and we're going to make it all fine and dandy, which is really, really rare, even in traditional publishing. It's uh, even in the big publishing houses, your own fan base is going to be the main initial driver of sales. Very important to uh, build it up. Word. Yeah. Now we can talk about the most important program we've talked about today. <laughs> um. Yeah, it would probably be. What's uh, What's the full name for this program? Uh, just let me check my desktop. KDP Rocket. Um, yeah. Also known as those... Publisher Rocket now. I think they changed the yeah, name. Not, yeah. KDP Rocket is the new name. Publisher Rocket was the, the pre-2019 name, I believe. I thought uh, it was the other way around. 
Uh, whatever. People can Google both. <laughs> I'm sure the results will be the same. Yeah, it's Publisher Rocket now. Publisher Rocket. Oh, KDP Rocket. Okay. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, in any case, it's a pretty simple to use program that just about automates a lot of the keyword research uh, work for you. It, you just there, there's several options to it, but it pretty much comes down to searching for your book. And it will t uh, throw you around, or if you don't have a book published yet, you can search for whatever book, and it will give you uh, what books Amazon considers similar to it regarding categories, regarding uh, sales, uh, just like related sales. Was a, just like when someone buys one book and then goes and buys another book, uh, it, it will give you a lot of information which you can use to work your way through planning an ad campaign, be it with Amazon or other platforms. Uh, it, it just automates a lot of the grunt work when it comes to researching these kind of things. So definitely worth the price. It's a lifetime license. I believe it was about $99. Yeah, it's like 100 bucks. So if you're serious about going into publishing, it it's probably a tool that will serve you well up across the years so it long as it's absolutely it worth the money yeah absolutely even more so if you plan to spend on ad campaigns which you should be learning to do if you plan to involve yourself in the publishing industry anyway even with honestly even without ad campaigns though like just the keyword and category finders are game changers in itself there's a yeah. lot of authors out there who still, one, only use two, get two categories for their books. And um, there's a lot of authors out there with very subpar keyword usage. Like putting in fantasy. Great. Yeah. That, you and I mean, five billion other books. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Overall, I think people just underestimate the amount of resources out there for them. It's a matter of knowing where to look. And sometimes that can be tiresome to a lot of people, especially because when you're starting out, it can just be cumbersome to receive all this new information and how to manage it. Uh, there's a lot of great starting places. Most people can go and look just like 20 books, 50 K. It's a Facebook group started by Michael Anderley. He's one of Amazon's bestseller authors. Just many years ago, he started the group. And overall, there's a lot of communities like that one that just have great insight into what are the steps to be taken by new authors to build up a reader base, so to speak. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest right now. We're talking about a lot of these tools, and I know most of the tools are not for writing itself. And I know a lot of amateur writers might have the mindset of, well, I just want to write and that's <laughs> it, right? But realistically, there's a lot of work you're going to have to do outside of writing if you want to be a successful author. I mean, um, it, it, de yeah. it depends a lot Set of- Set yourself up for success. Yeah. Yeah, but we went over this in an earlier episode. It depends on what kind of writing you're going to do. If you're going to work with a publisher that just handles all that for you, then yeah, go ahead and just write. Just know you're making a compromise on whatever you're going to earn and whatever you're going to control creatively by doing so. But if you're an indie writer, just know if you want to have the best of the potential you can get out for your book, you will have to know how to use each of these softwares or their alternatives in order to be competitive, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I do want to say for publishing, Moonquill has a very good contract. <laughs> Uh, yes. And we can handle a lot of the non-writing stuff for you, okay? We can handle the publishing, the marketing, even the editing. We cover can make creation. it... Yeah, even book cover creation. We can handle that, all of that, but yes, like Ink said, we will take a percentage of earnings. You're not going to earn 100% of the money that comes from your book, but depending on who you are, that could be something that interests you or even is important to you. For example, um, one of our newest author, actually, JP, he is a busy guy. He writes 
for many hours, I believe, every day. He's also a chef, so he doesn't have that many hours um, left to like invest in learning all of this stuff and doing it himself, which is why he came to us. And we came to an agreement. He still makes... Uh, I don't I don't want to give the specifics of the contract away, but he still makes the vast majority of the money that his book uh takes just in, know in the Munquil as an alternative will be way better than the treatment you will receive from your average publisher out there. Uh yeah, and the cut as well. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna yeah, we're be really shelled now. <laughs> I mean yeah, I was like, yeah. I'll just stay quiet here. <laughs> when you're giving information, you gotta give all the information. Otherwise, it just sounds shady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of. If, you're, inter if you're interested at all and you're an author, let us know. We'll talk to you. We'll show you the contract. We'll talk to you everything that it encapsulates, and you can really learn about it. Um, I know for a fact that there are some authors who have looked at our publishing page. Um, who came out of it with came out of reading our publishing page with the wrong mindset because they basically skimmed through it and they didn't really take the time to read everything properly. Which honestly, if you're an author, you really should be reading stuff like this properly. But we wrote on our publishing program that all of our contracts have us taking less than 50% of the book's revenue okay that is a fact all of our current contracts we take less than 50 percent of revenue even the ones that are like a hundred thousand words long and we spent months editing okay even those are less than 50 percent i'd say about half of our contracts we take less than 25 percent but the thing is i know for a fact some authors have looked at us saying that less than 50%, and they went back and told other author authors, oh, Moonquill takes 50% of your income if you publish with them. And that's just so wrong. <laughs> and I mean, it's really unfortunate. I know Moonquill's staff is just online. You can message them. We won't make you sign an NDA, unlike some other platforms not to be mentioned. Um, you're free to check in, just know about, just learn about the conditions. You don't have to sign anything. And then if you like the conditions you were offered, you can go ahead and publish with the platform. There's yeah. no strings attached. And after, like, if you talk to us about our contract, you don't like it, you're free to discuss the contract with anyone you want. We're okay with it. We're confident in our contract. We're confident in our service. Uh, we're really shills now. I'm really sorry this turned into a shill episode. <laughs> uh, on that note, it wasn't planned. <laughs> yeah, it it actually wasn't planned. I just made it that way. That's uh, Moon's AI not being updated yet. Yeah, sorry. My anti shill update is next week. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you guys have any? Other programs, software uh, stuff you guys want to? I would like mention? to briefly mention um, Campfire, which should have been mentioned. Oh, oh dang it! Oh, yeah, my movie, god, I forgot cannon, about Campfire, which is, right. I think is a really useful tool. Redo that. We're redoing the episode. We're starting at Campfire. Okay, guys. Oh my lord! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But Campfire is actually awesome. Uh, Tectonic, do you want to start off with it? Well, uh, there's a lot that the campfire can do but the campfire is a essentially a planning program you can construct an entire it's a world building i feel the best way to describe it is a world building program you can f build an entire world in um campfire, campfire. Yeah. yeah i completely forgot the name then um <laughs> including including plot lines characters events that will happen in your plot languages magical items locations and it's all relational so anything which is a part of any other segment you can attach to a node so if you say you can create all these different things and you can have them uh happen in a timeline so say you make a character uh, a character called richard 
and Richard lives on the continent of Moonville. Uh, and he <laughs> finds the magic sword <laughs> Orion, all right? Um, so all these different things you can create in different sections of Campfire. And then when you go to design events on your timeline, you can link them all in so you can check and cross-reference everything um, and keep all that information in one place. So once you've planned it all out and you go to writing, you can just check on the events as you go through and it gives you an idea of all different information. And there's so much more to it as well than just that, but that's what I primarily use it for. And I think it's so useful. So I actually primarily use it for character creation. For characters, you can put in basic info, such as their full name, gender, sexuality, social class. But you can also add in references for each character. For example, I'm planning a new story called... Actually, I'm not going to tell you what it's called. But uh, there's a character in it. It's an Easter novel. There's a character in it called Wu Xiaolong. And I can put in, in references who this person's parents are, who their sister, brother, dad, grandpa, enemies, yeah. friends, anything like that. I can put in their statistics. I can put in their height, their age. I can put in their physical attributes, their eye color, hair, yeah. how many toes they have, like literally it's anything. Yeah, Personality can... traits. Sorry, you, can sorry. Change, you can change all those <laughs> over time as well. If yeah. you're using the story planner, you can add attributes to events. So that I, I think the specific part that I use is the sliders, and you can have different emotions and different levels. So as events change, you can change how the character feels as you go through the story, and it helps really build a sense of how a character feels when you're when you're writing. You can really like see based on those, which I think is really useful. Like you can change it as it goes along so say like he has seven fingers he can lose two of them and you can set that at that point in your plot and it will sort of keep track of it which i think is really cool yeah and you can uh just going back to the character page you can also have any notes you want and have their backstory written all in one place and it's all done in file it's all done in like a file format, so it's super easy to find all of the characters you create. This is actually, I think, the best tool for character creation and remembering <laughs> um, there yeah. is out there. I definitely, uh, there's, there's so much to this software. Like, like Moon said, he just uses the character section. Mainly I don't to just develop. use it, but that oh, is the main thing I use yeah, it for. Sorry. He mainly uses the character section to develop his characters, but it's got the characters is one of them. Then it's got relationships. It's got timeline. It's got character arcs. It's got world encyclopedia, species, cultures, languages, religions, philosophy, systems, magic, and items. And every single one of those sections is as well developed and in depth as the characters section is that moon sort of detail there's so much there that it's it's such a good tool for actually any sort of scenario you're looking for i do want to know how do you use the relationship tab so the relationship tab this isn't more of a tutorial now moon but okay okay we don't have to go into I, that now but I, the relationship tab. It, so <laughs> The way relationships, <laughs> the way relationships work is you have your you have your nice web. So that's how it's done. You have webs, and then you I can can't even add. make a web. <laughs> I can't even make a web. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, you, okay. you know, we'll talk Never about mind. this Never after mind. the podcast. Okay, like this is this is going to go on too long. The nice thing about Campfire is there's quite a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Um, regarding their software and things like that. And their website has quite a lot of information and tutorials and um, anything. So you can add things and they sort of show how they interact with each other. That's what relationship makes sense. It's a relationship between different things and how they affect one another. You're but, clicking a lot. Yeah, I know. I was looking through the software. Yeah, fair, <laughs> That's what I was I doing. So, but it's a it's a really good program. If you're 
interested in it at all, um, you can check out their website. They, they're they coming out with a new web-based software, which is supposed to have even more sections. Um, so if you're interested in that also, they've got loads of videos about it for promoting it at the minute. So yeah, I think Campfire is an awesome tool. Yeah, Campfire, I would say, is just as important as KDP Rocket. And I would say those two are probably the most important programs you can have if you're an author. Google Docs, of course, is free, so you don't have to pay for that. All right, anyway, uh, I think that's it for the episode. Anyone have comments? No, not I really. Just well. good. A, a, ge a general thanks to everybody who stayed till the end and listened I... to all our ramblings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this was an informative episode. Also, I'm going to edit most of the ramblings out, so we're good. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. By the time this episode comes out, um, The Money Trap, book one of Money Grubbing Lover, will be out on Amazon. It is going to be our first romance book. Ooh. So, yeah, go check that out. Minko's first romance nice, book. Nice, nice, nice. All right. See you guys. See ya. Thanks See ya, for everybody. watching. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.